If there's one thing you should know about me straight away, it's that I was raised surrounded by books. My name is Sheila. My dad had a large publishing firm, so it was more than simply piles of books at home. I would accompany him to work whenever I could, starting when I was a little child. Got your nose stuck in a book again? Every time he discovered me curled up in a corner of his office, absorbed in anything I could get my hands on, Dad would make a joke. Yeah, and I bet I can read more books than you this month, I would reply, always up for a battle. I was living in imaginative worlds when I was at his office, not simply reading. Really, it was wonderful. At my free time, I enjoyed seeing Dad at meetings and his interactions with authors, artists, and other influential people who believed they knew better. Everyone respected him because of the coolness with which he handled everything, yet it never made him distant. I carried my passion for literature into adulthood by becoming a teacher and influencing young people to enjoy reading as much as I did. I continued to see Dad at work on the last Friday of each month. Life chose to give me a curveball on one of those Fridays. Ben, a lanky man with an armful of manuscripts and an odd smile, was presented to me by Dad. In the hopes that Dad might take an interest, he came there to pitch his newest book. This is Sheila, my daughter, Ben. Dad gave Ben a pat on the back and added, Sheila, he's a budding writer with some interesting ideas. Ben held out a trembling hand, which I accepted with a smile. Sheila, nice to meet you. According to your father, you are the true critic in this place. I hope you won't treat me too badly. I chuckled. I'll try to be forgiving of you. What is the subject of your book? From that point on, we clicked. As it turned out, Ben had a genuine charm about him and was humorous, if a little rough around the edges. Though a bit crude, his stories weren't awful either. We decided to get married after a year of his wooing me with charming coffee shop outings and late night walks, discussing everything from Plato to the greatest pie in town. Dad saw potential in him. Only close family and friends attended the little wedding. All day long, Dad was grinning, and when it came time for speeches, he got up with a glass in his hand and a gleam in his eye that I knew would make me feel embarrassed. Sheila, you have always amazed me since you were a young child. You are intelligent, gorgeous, and as obstinate as a mule. You seemingly love this young guy more than his papers, and now you've gone and married him. Ben reddened and looked at me as if I were his anchor, and everyone laughed. Dad said, to Sheila and Ben, may your lives be filled with more love than there are books in my office, and that's saying something as he raised it. The beginning of life with Ben was idyllic. However, the costs in late evenings spent thinking about how to make ends meet are not mentioned in fairy tales. Despite my belief in Ben's brilliance, the world didn't appear ready to bite, and his books weren't exactly flying off the shelves. To keep us afloat, I increased my school hours, took on more subjects, and even organized after-school organizations. Trying not to show my worry, I said, hey, I picked up an extra shift at the tutoring center while stirring a pot of spaghetti one evening. Ben was seated at the table. Paper sprawled out like a raging sea of rage and ache. His eyes were weary yet appreciative as he gazed up. With all this effort, you're killing yourself, baby. Perhaps I should put writing on pause for a while and find a real job. I approached him held his hand, and felt the rough edges of his fingers from all the writing he had done. No, it will be easy for you. I am aware of that. Let's just continue a little bit longer, shall we? All right, you tell wonderful stories. All they need are the correct eyes. With a wordless thank you lingering between us, he gripped my hand. We had a late supper that evening and discussed his most recent novel, which was unsuccessful. Dad stopped by one day, which wasn't out of the ordinary, but the expression on his face was. His Ike got an idea, 
face frequently signaled that something intriguing was about to happen. Have you ever considered writing for children, Ben? Sheila spends her days with them, so she has all the inside information. Perhaps something to consider, Dad said nonchalantly as he looked through one of Ben's rejected manuscripts. Ben raised his eyebrows as he turned to face me. You know, kids. What are your thoughts? Could I do it? Excitement rising, I nodded. You certainly could. I can tell you what kids enjoy and what stories they remember. Together, we could give it a shot. So we did. We started having brainstorming meetings at night. Ben would weave stories out of the stories I told him about the games the kids played and the things they laughed at when I got home from school. Working together to create environments for kids who were a lot like my pupils felt appropriate. As the months passed, our first children's book, a tale about a cunning raccoon with a golden heart, began to take form. Dad was instrumental, giving us tips on how to market it, how to pitch it to his contacts. When we finally got a publishing deal, it felt like we'd won the lottery. Here's to Rocky Raccoon, may he be the first of many. Ben toasted, holding up his beer one night in our little kitchen that suddenly seemed too small for our growing dreams. To Rocky, I echoed my heart full, thinking maybe, just maybe, we'd turned a corner. Rocky Raccoon was just the beginning. After the first book hit the shelves and kids went nuts for it, Ben and I knew we had something special. We buckled down, turning out stories faster than you'd believe. Our little office at home became a workshop of dreams, paper everywhere, ideas scrawled on walls, and endless cups of coffee. One evening, as we were knee-deep in our third book, Ben tossed his pen down and stretched. Can you believe this, Sheila? From barely paying the bills to signing autographs at book fairs, it's nuts. I laughed, tossing a crumpled paper ball at him. We're not quite J.K. Rowling yet, but yeah, it's wild. Kids are actually dressing up as our characters for Halloween. Ben picked up the paper ball, shot a grin at me, and threw it back. And to think, all this started with your idea to write for kids. You were right on the money. As our fame grew, so did the opportunities. Invitations to schools interviews, even a TV spot. I was teaching less and writing more, which was a dream come true in its own way. Dad was over the moon, always bragging to anyone who'd listen. Ben and Sheila, the dynamic duo, you guys are smashing it. Dad said one day, dropping by with a new contract from a big-name publisher, they won a series. Can you believe it? A whole series based on your characters? Ben, who was usually the cool one, nearly jumped out of his chair. A series? That's big. Big league, baby. We've hit the jackpot, I said. As our book series took off, our lives changed in ways we'd never imagined. We bought a new house with more space for our work, and every room felt like a piece of our success. Celebrations were frequent, with friends and family always eager to toast to our success. At one particularly lively party with our closest friends, raising glasses in our new living room, I took a moment to watch Ben laughing and sharing stories. I felt a mix of pride and a twinge of fear. Were we ready for all this change? Hey, you okay? Ben noticed my quiet moment and sidled up beside me. Yeah, just, it's a lot, isn't it? But good, really good. I smiled, leaning into his side. He kissed my forehead, wrapping an arm around me. It's more than good. It's everything we dreamed of, and I couldn't have done any of this without you, Sheila. Life got even more hectic, but in a way that made every busy moment worth it. Soon enough, I was craddling our newborn son, deciding to step away from teaching to focus on our family. With Ben's writing now more than enough to support us comfortably, I threw myself into being a mom and a collaborator on each new book. 
Even though I wasn't in the classroom, I kept my hand in education by channeling what I knew about kids into our stories. Look at us, huh? I said to Ben one night as we looked over our latest manuscript, the baby asleep in the next room. Making books and raising a little boy. I think we're kind of superheroes. Ben laughed, pulling me close. Yeah, superheroes who deal in diapers and dialogues. But I wouldn't have it any other way. The evening of Dad's 70th birthday was supposed to be a grand celebration, and it was held in one of the big, fancy restaurants downtown with a buffet where everyone seemed to mingle effortlessly, except me. Perhaps as the night unfolded with laughter and the clinking of glasses, I couldn't help but notice Ben. He seemed unusually occupied, not with me or our son, Jamie, who was now 17 and more into his phone than the party, but with a young woman whose laughter seemed a bit too loud, even over the buzz of party chatter. They were tucked away at a corner table, heads close, talking animatedly. Something inside me tightened. I tried to focus on my dad, who was busy being the life of the party, but my eyes kept darting back to Ben. Finally, I pulled Dad aside during a quieter moment. Dad, who's that woman with Ben? I tried to sound casual, but my voice betrayed a tinge of concern. Oh, her. Dad glanced over, following my gaze. That's Lisa, the assistant editor at the publishing house. She's been working closely with Ben on his latest project. I nodded, feeling a lump form in my throat. They seemed to be getting along well. Dad gave me a reassuring pat on the shoulder. It's all professional, honey. You know how these events are, just shop talk and networking. His tone was dismissive, but it did little to ease the nagging doubt in my heart, pushing down the jealousy that bubbled up. I plastered a smile on my face and returned to the festivities. Relatives and important guests came over to congratulate Dad, pulling me into conversations and away from my spiraling thoughts. As the evening wore on, I found myself watching Ben and Lisa from across the room. They were laughing again, their heads tilted together in a way that looked far too intimate for a simple work discussion. Each laugh, each shared glance between them, felt like a small puncture to my heart. Let's get some fresh air, I suggested to Jamie, needing an escape from this stifling atmosphere. Outside, the cool night air felt like a bomb. Jamie and I leaned against the railing, overlooking the city lights. He talked about school, his friends, and his plans for college, normal things that felt grounding in that moment. Thanks for being here with me, Jamie. I needed this, I told him as we headed back inside. Anytime, Mom. You know I've got your back, he replied, bumping his shoulder against mine playfully. We re-entered the party, my resolve strengthened. I would enjoy the evening for Dad's sake, for Jamie's. As for Ben and whatever was happening there, I would deal with it later, when the music stopped and the guests went home. After returning from some fresh air with Jamie, I couldn't shake off the uneasy feeling that had settled over me. As much as I tried to focus on the celebration, my eyes inevitably wandered to where Ben was still chatting animatedly with Lisa. It was like watching a play where you already knew the tragic ending but couldn't leave your seat. Determined not to let this spoil the entire evening, I tried to mingle. Yet every laugh and snippet of music seemed to echo with underlying tension for me. Finally, I decided to head to the ladies' room to freshen up perhaps clear my head. That's when it happened. As I walked down the quiet hallway towards the restrooms, the muffled sound of voices stopped me dead in my tracks. The door to one of the private dining rooms was ajar, and through the crack, I saw Ben and Lisa. They weren't just talking. They were in an embrace, kissing like two teenagers, hidden away from prying eyes. My heart hammered against my chest so hard I thought it might burst. Anger, shock, and a profound sense of betrayal swirled inside me. I felt rooted to the spot, hidden by the shadow of a decorative plant. 
Just then, their conversation floated out clear and sharp. We need to figure this out, Ben. Once your book launches, we'll have enough to start fresh. Just you and me, Lisa whispered, her voice thick with emotion. Ben's reply was a low murmur, but his words were like daggers. I know, I know. I just need a bit more time to sort things out with Sheila. It's complicated with Jamie and everything. The cold reality of their plans hit me hard. I was supposed to be his partner, his wife, yet here he was, planning a future with someone else, as if our years together meant nothing. Feeling like I might get sick, I pushed off the wall and stumbled into the restroom. Inside, I leaned against the cool tile. My reflection in the mirror was a stark reminder of the fool I had been. Tears threatened, but I willed them back. Crying wasn't going to help. I needed to think. After a few deep breaths, I splashed water on my face, trying to erase any sign of my tears. Composing myself, I stepped back into the hall, only to bump straight into Dad. Sheila, what's wrong? You look pale, Dad said, his voice full of concern as he noticed my disheveled appearance. It's nothing, Dad, just feeling a bit under the weather. I lied, attempting to brush past him. Dad, however, wasn't having any of it. He took my arm gently and steered me away from the main hall into a quieter corridor. This isn't just a headache, is it? Talk to me, honey. The floodgates opened, and I poured out everything to him, from Ben's frequent late nights to what I had just witnessed. Dad listened, his face hardening with every word. This needs careful handling, Sheila. We'll sort it out. Don't you worry, he assured me, his tone firm yet soothing. Let's meet at the detective's office tomorrow. We'll get to the bottom of this. Nodding, feeling a mix of relief and dread, I agreed. The rest of the evening was a blur. I couldn't bear to stay any longer at the party, claiming illness, and left with Jamie, who was confused but too sleepy to question much. Ben didn't come home that night, claiming later that he was caught up at work. I knew better now, but kept my newfound knowledge to myself, preparing for what was to come. The next steps needed to be planned with care, and I was grateful to have Dad by my side, ready to face whatever lay ahead. The next morning felt like one of those days when you wake up wishing the world would give you a rideau. With a heavy heart and a mind racing with thoughts of betrayal, I drove to the detective's office, where Dad had agreed to meet me. He was already there when I arrived, his face a mask of concern and determination. The detective, a middle-aged man named Ron, ushered us into his office. His room was lined with shelves filled with files and two chairs opposite his cluttered desk. It looked like a place where secrets came to light, and I braced myself for what was next. So Mr. Morris told me a bit on the phone. You want to look into your husband's activities, correct? Ron's tone was professional, but there was a hint of sympathy in his eyes. Yes, I need to know if what I saw is just the tip of the iceberg. I said, my voice faltering a bit towards the end. Ron nodded, pulling out a notepad. I'll need some details from you. Times, places, any particular people involved besides the woman you mentioned. As I recounted everything, from Ben's late nights to the incident at the party, Ron took notes, his expression unreadable. After I finished, he leaned back in his chair, tapping the pen against his notepad. We'll start with surveillance. Check his known hangouts and track his movements. If he's meeting this woman, we'll find out when and where. Do you want photos or just a report? Photos, Dad cut in before I could answer. We need everything documented, just in case. Understood, Ron replied. He then looked at me. It might take a few weeks to gather everything. These things, they take time and patience. Three agonizing weeks later, we were back in Ron's office, sitting across from him as he laid out what he had found. 
The folder he opened seemed to spill out my worst fears, photos, detailed reports, bank statements, and more. They painted a picture I couldn't deny. Mrs. Morris, I'm sorry, but it's as you suspected. Ron began. Your husband has been seeing the assistant editor for over two years, since shortly after she was hired by your father. My heart sank as he continued. He's transferred large sums to her accounts, bought her an apartment and a car. They spend most of their free time together, and from what I've gathered, they've discussed marriage, planning it for after your son turns 18 to avoid any complications with alimony. Tat's face was stone. He reached over and squeezed my hand, his grip tight, shared outrage. This, this is unbelievable. After everything I've done for him, this is how he repays our family? Dad's voice was low, each word heavy with betrayal. I sat frozen as the reality settled in. The man I had loved and trusted had planned his future on the ruins of our past. What do we do now, Dad? My voice was barely a whisper, drowned out by the roaring in my ears. We'll figure this out, Sheila. We'll make sure he regrets this, Dad said firmly, his jaw set. Dad had invited Ben, me, and Lisa, the assistant editor, to our family home under the guise of discussing a new book. Once we were all seated in the living room, which had always been a place of warmth and laughter, Dad started the meeting in a tone that was unnervingly calm. Thank you all for coming today. I thought we'd discuss a potential new plot, something real, something revealing. Ben looked uneasy, glancing at Lisa, who was visibly nervous. I sat silently, watching his dad open a folder thick with photos and documents, the evidence collected by the detective. He slowly pulled out one photo after another, laying them on the coffee table for all to see. Imagine a book where the main character, a successful writer, betrays everyone who loves him. Dad began, his voice steady but cold. Ben's face drained of color as each photo and document showcased his affair, his financial betrayals. Dad didn't stop there. He recounted how Ben got his start with his help, how I had supported him through thick and thin. Writing the early books that made him famous, providing ideas, and editing drafts. You see, I've invested a lot in you, Ben, he waved at the photos. And this, he gestured again, is how you've repaid us. Lisa began to cry softly, her hands trembling. I didn't think it would go this far, she murmured. I'm so sorry, I'm pregnant. Dad's eyes then turned to her. And you, young lady, he said, think about the decisions you make and who they hurt. The room was thick with tension, a stark contrast to the decorous surroundings. Then Dad leaned forward, his hands clasped together. I could make a few calls right now to some very influential friends in the publishing world. What do you think would happen to your career then, Ben? Ben was shaking, his voice barely audible. Please, hi, I made a mistake. That's not enough, Ben, I said, my voice firmer than I felt. I slid the divorce papers across the table. Sign these. They state that all assets stay with me, as do the rights to our books. Lisa gasped, clutching her stomach. Please don't leave me with nothing. I looked at her, my heart hardening against the betrayal, but softening at her plight. I'll leave you the apartment Ben bought you. That's more than generous, all things considered. She nodded quickly, wiping her tears, and signed the papers. Ben tried to argue, his eyes darting from the documents to Dad's stern face. This isn't fair. I deserve. Dad picked up his phone, holding it menacingly. Do I need to make those calls, Ben? Defeated, Ben signed the papers, his hands trembling as he realized the full extent of his losses. Once the door closed behind them, the silence was almost deafening. Ted turned to me, his expression softening. Shayla, let's focus on a fresh start now. You and Jamie need something better, something new. 
Maybe think about moving closer to us, getting a new place where you can make new memories. I nodded, feeling the weight of the day settling on my shoulders. I'll think about it. Dad, thanks, I managed to say. The prospect of moving forward felt both daunting and necessary. When I got home, Jamie was waiting, his face anxious as he looked up from his homework. Mom, are you okay? How did it go? Sitting down beside him, I took a deep breath. It's over, Jamie. Your dad and I, we're done. He made some choices, and I made some too. We're going to start over, just you and me. Jamie reached out, taking my hand, his support immediate and firm. I'm with you, Mom. It's been rough, but I know you did the right thing. Let's just move on together. Over the next few weeks, we talked a lot about our next steps. Dad's suggestion to move closer kept playing in my mind. The idea of a fresh start grew on me, and soon, Jamie and I began looking for a new place. Somewhere closer to my parents, somewhere we could build a new life. It took some time to find the perfect house, but once we did, it felt right. A comfortable home that was still our own, but not too distant from my parents. I went back to teaching as we got comfortable. I was reminded of why I liked my job so much as I walked back into the school and saw the children's faces light up. I could hear their enthusiasm and laughing. I was able to regain my strength thanks to these children's unending interest and tenacity. The pattern of life began to return, a new normal that was different but satisfying. Jamie flourished, immersing himself in his academics and finally attending college. He kept me anchored through the changes with his unwavering support and commitment. Dad came over and sat next to me one evening as I was enjoying the sunset from the veranda of our new house. Sheila, you did a great job. You have my admiration. I'm grateful, Dad. Although it hasn't been simple, it feels right. Being here beside you and Mom, starting again, has allowed us both to recover and develop. Gazing out over the yard, he nodded. Life throws some tough lessons our way, but how we come out of them, that's what defines us. I had a calmness I hadn't experienced in a long time as we sat there, the evening's calm enveloping us. Indeed, the journey had been unbelievably difficult, but now we were united and stronger. My days were filled with the joy of working with the kids and the affection of my family. I had returned to a life where I could flourish and find pleasure. 